Okay, I want to talk about what is omega D um, as part of the impulse response of our mass spring damper system. Actually, I forgot that I had already made myself up a little starting point. So we talked about how X of S, which was equal to X of S over F of S is one over MS squared plus BS plus K. But that can also be written as one over M S squared plus two zeta omega N S plus omega N squared. And if we're talking about an impulse response, then F of S is just equal to one, which means that X of S is actually equal to exactly the same thing as the transfer function. And so now we need to figure out how to inverse Laplace that. And we don't have anything in our abbreviated mean overly short Laplace transform table that takes that form. So we have this expression for x of s, and we need to find out how to do the partial fraction expansion. If we look at our Laplace transform table, the only options that have quadratic terms with, so we've got purely quadratic terms that are purely imaginary for sine and cosine, Otherwise, our only option is this decaying sine and decaying cosine that has this denominator. So my suggestion is that if we have x of s is equal to 1 over m s squared plus 2 zeta omega n s plus omega n squared, and we want to write that as c1 times the sine plus c2 times the cosine, so it's going to have this decaying sine wave form in the denominator. So if that's going to be true, both the numerator and the denominator have to be equal to one another. So let's take a look at these two denominators and how could they possibly be equal. So if s squared plus 2 zeta omega n s plus omega n squared is equal to s plus a squared plus omega squared, then I'm going to multiply this term out, and I'm going to get s squared plus 2as plus a squared, and then I still have this plus omega squared hanging on from the previous line. And if this is true, then it has to be true for every coefficient of s. And so I've got an s squared is equal to s squared. Well, that's true, but it's not super helpful. Then I've got this s to the first term, and then I've got this s to the zero term. So if I look at s to the first, we're saying that 2 zeta omega n s is equal to 2 a s. And so the 2's cancel and the s's cancel and I'm left with a is equal to zeta omega n. So that solves for one of my unknowns. And if I look at the s to the zero equation, I've got omega n squared is equal to a squared plus omega squared. Well, I have this, let's shove it in there omega n squared is equal to zeta squared omega n squared plus omega squared. Let's subtract that across to the other side. And I get that omega n squared minus zeta squared omega n squared is equal to omega squared. So I can at that point uh, pull out an omega n squared and so I get omega n squared times 1 minus zeta squared is equal to omega squared. And if I take the square root of both sides, I get that omega is equal to omega n root of 1 minus zeta squared. And that comes up often enough that we give it a name and we call it omega d, the damped natural frequency. So if I've got x of s is 1 over m s squared plus 2 zeta omega n s plus omega n squared, I'm saying that that can be C1 omega plus C2 S plus A, where A is now known to be S plus, or sorry, A is now known to be zeta times omega N. This would be S zeta omega N quantity squared plus omega and really squared, and this is omega D, and this is omega D. And it turns out if I multiply through by the denominator, since they're equal, I get that 1 over m has to equal c1 omega d plus c2s plus zeta omega n. Well, this has to go to 0. So from my numerator, 
I get that 1 over m is equal to c1 omega d plus c2s plus c2 zeta omega n. Well, this is the only s term, and so c2, so the s to the first term tells me that 0 is equal to c2s. Well, that implies that c2 is equal to 0. Then I can solve this, so c1 is equal to 1 over m omega d. So if I was trying to get all of that into a numeric form for a symbolic expression of the impulse response, I know that omega n is equal to k over m square root. I know that b critical is equal to 2 times the square root of k times m. I know that zeta is equal to b over b critical. And then I can solve for omega d is equal to omega n 1 minus zeta squared. And then I can take all of that, substitute it into C1, and I'm done. So I will let you do the final inverse Laplace step from there, but if you know C1 and you know C2 is equal to zero, this is pretty straightforward.